So my background is pretty funny actually. I studied a business economics degree back in Argentina where I'm from and then I worked at a corporate job for a while and, and I, I wasn't in tune with it. I, I always knew that my passion was entrepreneurship but I was lacking the ability, the, the content, the training on how to actually get an idea and, and transform it into a business. And, and I think that that was what mainly guided me in my entrepreneurial journey. I knew it was KBS the moment I walked in. I don't know, it was kind of an instant love because it was the way that we engaged, it was the way that she talked about the community, it was the way that the, the MBA itself was structured. Obviously, the idea of having an entrepreneurship specialization for me, it was super important. Having d different timetables also was key for me. Um, having a good student support service that can potentially get me in contact with people that can help me pursue my passion. That was also super, super key. One of the things that I love about Kaplan is that um, it, it is more affordable than other institutions, but you still have the same teachers that you have in those big name universities. Making connections matter, but actually nurturing those connections are the most important thing. A clear example is what happened with um, Juan Bejani. He's uh, one mentor that I met at the Academy of Entrepreneurs, he got a license to do a TEDx event, a TEDx event on climate change. And then that led to uh, just a fantastic experience, um, having nine speakers on stage on such an important topic as climate change and having the opportunity of mentoring them on how to present on stage. It was just unbelievable. For me, the most interesting part so far has been learning about those soft skills and, and things of the other subjects, the, the more technical subjects. I think that having an MBA on, with a specialization on entrepreneurship is it's going to open a lot of doors for me, especially in the space that I want to work with, which is helping other entrepreneurs. Meet Eric. Eric has decided that he wants to study abroad in Australia. Congratulations, Eric! Studying abroad and becoming an international student in Australia is a big life decision that can have big rewards. Eric has contacted MSA Immigration Australia because he wants to live in one of the best countries in the world and end up with a university degree from a world-recognised educational institution that will help him succeed in his profession back in his home country or as he continues his journey and migrates permanently to Australia. MSA Immigration Australia knows that this big life decision can often be stressful because it's important to students like Eric and he wants to get it right. That's why we have simplified the study to migrate process into four easy to follow steps. MSA has removed all complication and confusion so that Eric can rest assured that his Mara registered migration agent and QEA education counsellor is taking care of his unique study abroad experience. First, Eric will receive an initial assessment and education counselling session. Our team will then enrol him into his educational institution and get Eric to pay his tuition fee before the final step where MSA will lodge Eric's visa. Once Eric's visa is approved, he can now prepare for his Australian adventure. Hi, um, good afternoon. So um, thank you everyone for um, 
this time and we appreciate your presence for today and I hope everyone is having a great weekend. I am your host, Reina Roberto, I'm Qualified Education Agent Counselor and today we will be featuring one of the best schools in Australia, which is Kaplan Business School, Australia. So we are joined today by Ms. Pauline from Global Study Partners and also Yong Lim, the Regional Manager of Southeast Asia and Central Asia. Um, just a reminder for um, some housekeeping rules. Please make sure to use your uh, full names when joining the meeting and if and you are muted so as to not distract the speakers. Um, please do not hesitate though to type in your questions on the chat box below um, so that we can actually uh, answer or answer your questions on the Q&A part after our the, the presentation of, after my presentation and after the presentation of Young Lim. And yeah, so basically um, with that, um, I also want to remind you all that please, um, if you have time to take a screenshot of this webinar um, and of course, um, like our page and take also a screenshot of you liking our page so that you can be or we can qualify you for an entry on our grab credits or um, TGIF with MSA, uh, which is the end of every month. So yeah, um, basically what you only have to do is take a screenshot of this webinar and a screenshot of you liking our page and please send it to our hello email or hello at msaimmigrationaustralia.com.au. So later on, we will be get, sorry, we will be giving a full um, information on um, how you could avail on that TGIF Friday grab credits promo of MSA. All right, so I would like to start off with uh, my presentation first before we move on to our um, before we move on to our uh, main speaker for today. All right. So hold on. Okay. So. All right. Okay. So um, we are MSA Immigration. So we also believe in what uh, we also believe that uh, we provide for an inter international study and migration experience as unique as you. All right, so what is MSA all about? So let me just move this to the side. All right, so just a quick introduction about the company. So MSA Immigration was actually formerly known as Australian Dream Visa Team and was founded by our principal, Chris Mary Tentia in 2017. So we changed it to MSA Immigration Australia because uh, we have onboarded or we are joined by Steve Kilarski and Adam Davis. So yeah, so basically as the company is growing, so we had to, um, what do you call this, expand our business and of course rebrand our business. So um, MSA is set to be a leading Australian migration agency with a focus on general skilled visa, visitor visa, partner visa, and of course student visa. So um, not only do we um, although our today's topic would be a study, work, and live in Australia, we also serve other types of visas, such as this visa that these visas that I have previously mentioned. All right. So our main office is located in Perth, in Western Australia, with the regional office, of course, located here in the Philippines, located in Ortigas, Pasig City. So um, yeah, as a re registered migration agent in Australia, MSA Immigration Australia ensures that clients are provided with up-to-date knowledge on Australian migration law requirements. And we also cater to clients who are interested to pursue their studies in Canada, but that can be for another discussion later on. All right. So um, here are our licenses and certification. So. Um, the principal or our registered uh, migration advisor. So her name is Christ Marie Tentia. So you can check her on the Mara website. So her M A R N I D is one seven nine six six five zero. And you can also later on if you are um, interested to know more um, about any other types of visas that you can actually avail in Australia, you can book uh, a consultation directly with her. So later on we will be discussing about that as well. All right. So. Um, this is me, so Reina Lee Roberto. I have a qualified. I am a qualified education agent counselor with the QEAC number R zero sixty four. All right. So, uh, MSA Immigration Australia staff are highly competent, and we can le we can legally advise you on reg Australian migration, and we can offer the best student visa advice that fits a client's profile. So we we tend to look into the long term benefits of our students, not just you know the study. Um, part of this program. All right. Okay. 
So what are, what are our services? So we do pride ourselves with years of experience and having vast experience of what we offer to our clients. So I've mentioned earlier, we um, offer student visa. So that's both for Australia and Canada, family visa. So if you have any relatives or any, um, what they call this, uh, partners who are in Australia, then you can avail for this family visa if you're if you're wanting to go on a tour or visit Australia. So we do have tourist visa, skilled migration visa for those qualified professionals, postgraduate and graduating graduate working visa for those who are already um, in Australia and wants to pursue a further stay in Australia. So we do also give that kind of service. Uh, we also offer. Um, free visa and assessment consultation for student visas. And um, we also offer complementary services such as overseas student healthcare arrangement, pre-departure orientation, airport and accommodation arrangement, and of course, English exam and review booking assistance. All right. So, okay, so let's discuss a little bit about Australia. So why should you choose Australia? Or basically, why is Australia like, a good place to pursue your studies, all right? So, um, yeah, so basically these are some of the um, images that you can, these images are uh, the places that you can see in Australia. Some photos are actually mine, so I've visited Australia previously, and these photos are basically what it looks like in Australia. So these are just some of them. There are plenty or there are heaps of um, beautiful uh, flora and fauna, and of course, tourist destination, in Australia. So these are just some of the things that you can enjoy when you go and study in Australia. All right. So aside from that, um, here are the benefits of studying in Australia. So um, number one is, of course, work and lifestyle balance. So basically, um, you can work and study and, of course, uh, have a balanced lifestyle at the same time. So I do have students there when I went and visit my students that they have actually um, said that it's way different than our setting here in the Philippines. So um, I'm sure you would guys would understand me. Like sometimes even until Sundays, we're in NSTP, ganon. So here in Dinaman or so Australia, it's not the same. So and also most of the programs that you're going to take in or yung mga units that you're going to take in are very focused talaga doon sa course that you're going to take up. Hindi siya parang sa atin na may English, science, so, and PE, something like that. So it's not the same as Australia. Okay. All right. So um, another reason is they have a friendly and welcoming and safe country. So in fact, they're one of the safest countries in the world. Um, again, unique flora and fauna and plenty of outdoor activities to explore. So yeah, um, that's something that you can do as well. Um, fourth, reason is of course access to world-class education and um, in fact Australia is the third most popular destination for international students so as you may have known uh, probably you know already some of you might already know this the first one is um, US the second is UK but with the um, economical and political turmoil in those countries that's the reason why like Australia is going up into the place of or, or um like climbing into the rank in terms of being um, the most popular um, destination for international students. Okay, so um, capital cities in Australia have been included in top most livable cities in the world with the, with the indicators, of course, such as healthcare, work, education, infrastructure, economical stability, transport, networks, and community service, recreational opportunities. So these are the things that makes the capital cities of Australia um, livable. It's because, um, because of these factors. All right. So Australia is also known for being multicultural, multicultural um, country and is home to very diverse group of people. And it's got one of the liveliest festival cultures in the world. So, hindi lang po Australia sa may kita po natin doon, but we do have uh, people from all around the world. So, dun sa video ni Captain Business School earlier, um, if you've watched it, um, he's from Argentina. So, it's not just uh, hindi lang doon. So, marami po tayo mga um, people from all around the world who are all, uh, actually in Australia, which makes um, it's very beneficial for you guys. It's because magkakaroon tayo ng wider network in terms of friends, in terms of um, kumbaga, uh, pagkilala ng culture ng mga ibang tao and stuff like that. All right. So number eight, Australia has some of the finest universities and 
um, institutions and uh, graduates from Australian schools are highly sought, sought after the, uh, due to the impressive international reputation of the Australian education system. So another fun fact about Australia is usually they don't have any board exams. So the reason behind it is um, the government is actually um, um, giving like a set of um, guidelines and protocols to these schools so that as um, ang tawag dito, para ma-filter out nila kung baga that they or lahat sila is of the quality or the standard that is set by the government. So the reason that we do have like um, a board exam here in the Philippines because we all over we have all over like parang around 4,000 plus institutions here in the Philippines who offer higher education program. So mahirap i-filter yon. That's why we do have a board exam para masala po kung sino ba yung mga pinaka-qualified who really took their time to study and para ma-filter nila kung sino ba yung parang, um, parang may natutunan kumbaga sa schools nila. So it's basically something na ganun. Kaya pero meron tayong board exam. All right. So um, some additional reasons, so um, Australia is actually known for its inventions all over the world. And um, some of these are, of course, the black box, um, electronic pacemaker, Wi-Fi, Google Maps, all very useful to everyone, um, especially like I know Wi-Fi. So it's very, um, kumbaga, um, kailangan na siya these days, especially that we're in this pandemic. So thanks um, for Australia for actually inventing um, the Wi-Fi. All right. So aside from that, um, ad any uh, or additional benefits of studying in Australia is, of course, number one, gain international qualifications. So by the way, you can use your qualifications not just in Australia. You can use it in any Commonwealth country, such as the US, UK, Canada, New Zealand, Singapore, or wherever. So hindi lang po siya sa Australia recognize. Another benefit of studying in Australia is for you to build connections with people all from all across the, the globe. So this one I have mentioned earlier as well. So you would also have work rights while studying. So um, um, yeah, so basically your work rights while you're studying as an international student is that you can work 40 hours per fortnight and unlimited during holidays, vacations, or semestral breaks. Yep. Um, and full-time work rights on a postgraduate or graduate stream working visa upon graduation. So, ano po ba to? So, basically, um, may magagrant kasi kayo na visa or depending on the program that you're going to take, you will be getting what we call a post or postgraduate or a graduate working visa upon graduation, which but we're in my entail po kayo na magstay in Australia and work full time. All right. And of, of course, there's also a possibility for applying for permanent residency and citizenship, but it's a case to case basis. So we'll go or we'll tackle more into that later. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, I've explained this earlier. So there are things that you have to consider, such as the working rights. The student work rights in Australia is 40 hours per fortnight. Again, limited hours during holidays, vacations, or semestral break. And if the student is married or in a de facto relationship and studying a bachelor's degree and below, you can actually bring your partner and your partner can work 40 hours per fortnight. However, if the student is married or in a de facto relationship and study, or studying a degree higher than a bachelor's level and you're bringing your partner with you, your partner can actually work unrestricted hours or unlimited. All right. So another thing is, um, okay. Um, all right. So basically, we will be discussing more about yung, um documents later on. So yeah. Um, hold on. Yeah, I just want to share a quick video from MSA. Okay, uh, sorry, I'm just gonna um, share sound. Okay, there you go. Meet Eric. Eric has decided that he wants to study abroad. Congratulations, Eric. Studying abroad and becoming an international student is a big life decision that can have big rewards. Eric has contacted MSA Immigration because he wants to live in one of the best countries in the world and end up with a university degree from a world-recognized educational institution that will help him succeed in his profession, back in his home country, or as he continues his journey and migrates permanently to his new home country. MSA
USA Immigration knows that this big life decision can often be stressful because it's important to students like Eric and he wants to get it right. That's why we have simplified the study to migrate process into four easy to follow steps. MSA has removed all complication and confusion so that Eric can rest assured that his Mara registered migration agent is taking care of his unique study abroad experience. First, Eric will receive an initial assessment and education counselling session. Our team will then enrol him into his educational institution and get Eric to pay his tuition fee before the final step where MSA will lodge Eric's visa. Once Eric's visa is approved, he can now prepare for his adventure as an international student. All right. So, um, okay. So before I move on into like the specific steps, sorry, and the requirements, and of course, how much are you uh, approximately? How much are you going to spend on it? Um, we would like. I would like to introduce you first to our um today's um co-host um Pauline so Pauline will be in Pauline is from um Global Study Partners so and she will be introducing our main host for today all right Pauline hi Rain thank you so much um hi everyone I'm so sorry I cannot turn on my video as of the moment so thank you for joining us this weekend I am Pauline from Global Study Partners we are a third-party recruitment channel based in Sydney, Australia, and we have partnerships with a lot of educational providers, not just in Australia, but in Canada. We also have in UK, Ireland, and USA. But for this afternoon, we will be joining with one of our top partner schools in Australia, a business school in Australia. So we have Kaplan's business school's regional manager, Mr. Young Lim. Young has more than a decade of experience in Australian international education. So please stay with us until the end as Young will be discussing everything about Kaplan Business School's courses, their fees, and of course, scholarships. So without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Young Lim. Hi, Young. Hi, Pauline. Yes, thank you for that kind introduction. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us uh, and obviously having me here today. Uh, and uh, yeah, please bear with me while I go through my slides for the next half an hour or so. But uh, please do remember also to write down any questions that you might have. The more questions, the better, so that obviously uh, we can uh, uh, understand your situation a bit better and then can help you a bit better. Okay, so I will share my screen right now. Okay. Okay, can everyone see now? Good? Yes, yes. yes. Working? Yes. Okay, great, perfect. All right, thanks. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, like Pauline mentioned, my name is Yong uh, from Kaplan Business School Australia. As you can see from our name, we are a data business, uh, dedicated business school based here in Australia. Yeah, uh, in our, we we have been in, in Australia for more than uh, twelve years. Yeah, uh, we do have five campuses across Australia. As you can see from the small map here, uh, Melbourne and Sydney would be our two of our largest campuses, the most popular uh, sort of cities here in Australia for international students. But we also have uh, smaller, quieter uh, campuses in Brisbane, Adelaide, as well as Perth. Okay, uh, it's worth mentioning that all our campuses are located in the city center in each of these cities. Uh, and uh, therefore, it will be very, very easy access to public transport for students to get to and from campus. All right. Uh, we have what we call a national curriculum, yeah, which means that uh, any course or any subject studied in any of our campuses are the same across uh, each campus. Yeah, A student studying an MBA in Sydney is exact, will be studying the exact same thing in Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, or Melbourne. Right, so because they are the same, students can also easily transfer within campuses if they want to as well. All right, so uh, let's say a student starts their study in Adelaide and their circumstances change and they want to move to Sydney, it's, it's, it's as, as easy as filling in the form, 
and then we can uh, prepare them a place in our next campus. All right. Okay, at our business school, we go by a trimester system. Yeah, which means, as you can see from the dates up here, we have four different intakes for students to join us. Yeah, we have a March intake, we have a July intake, September and November. Yeah, so de de uh, depending on when you want to start on and your, your, depending on your circumstances, we do have these four intakes that you can join us with. Each trimester, typically, it's about uh, four months. Okay, uh, with the exception of the... September intake, that one is a bit shorter one. It's only a two-month intake. Uh, that's why we call it an, an accelerated intake. All right. Kaplan Business School, we are actually part of the uh, Global Kaplan Network. Yeah, so if you do a bit of more research about us, uh, you'll find that we, uh, Kaplan as a whole, as a global company, we have actually 400 different locations in 30 different countries. All right. So when you come and study with us, you're studying in an institution that is globally known, globally recognized, yeah? And the qualification that you achieve and you get from us will also obviously be uh, recognized worldwide as well. Uh, each year, we actually uh, graduate about a million students worldwide, okay? So moving on to a bit more sort of uh, uh, focus on our business school, uh, which is why study with us? All right, Kaplan Business School, we are one of the few points uh, that we are known for is that we actually provide a very uh, attentive and nurturing study environment for all our students. All right, for example, our class sizes on average would be about 25 students in a classroom. All right, and that is pretty small uh, if you compare us, uh, compare us with uh, a university class lecture room, which might you might have 150 or 300 students. Right, uh, By having smaller classrooms, obviously students will have more attention, will have more support from their, not only from their lecturers, but from our other support staff and services, which we'll talk about more a bit uh, later. In addition to that, we also really focus on producing a graduate that is uh, pr pr producing uh, a really job ready graduate. Okay, we really focus on really practical style of teaching yeah, uh, and uh, all the courses that we have here at our business school will also have internships, job placements, basically uh, uh, included in the in, 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 into the course. Yeah, this is to, just to make sure students not only achieve their degree with us, but also get to explore their career opportunities, their work opportunities here with us. All right, uh, we conduct really, really practical type of workshop classrooms. Yeah, For example, our lecturers have what we call a 10 minute rule. Yeah, in which they won't speak more than 10 minutes at one time, all right? Every time they go through three or four or four to five slides, they will stop. And the class will open up to an activity. Yeah, we will have a, a, a discussion, a brainstorming session, for example. All right, so students will be engaging with their lecturers and their peers. You will be debating your ideas. You'll be exchanging your opinions with each other. Uh, and uh, this will happen, obviously, in the in a multicultural uh, classrooms. Okay, so we want to make sure that students don't only focus on the theory aspect uh, during their, their when they study with us, but also learn from uh, the, the, the students next to them and learn how to apply those theory into real life practical uh, situations, okay? All right, so next we'll look at, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the, the different type of student support that we have. And like I said, we think that this is a really, really important thing, especially for international students as you're studying in a new country, a foreign country, right? Uh, in a survey done back in 2020, we our student services actually and student support actually outrank every other public university here in Australia based on a national survey. Okay, this shows how much we invest into uh, supporting our students. All right. First and foremost, uh, we have an, a, what we call an academic success center in each of our campuses libraries. Okay, so this ASC uh, is responsible to help students with any additional need that students need uh, to if 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 they are not catching up with their studies, all right. Any additional academic help, all right. So if students are lagging behind their lectures, if they don't quite understand uh, certain concepts, or if they need help with their English language, 
or with their assignments or with their essays, they can easily book a time in to our ASC and we will help them uh, with, with, with any additional help that they need. Okay, one very, very popular service, for example, at our ASC is uh, proofreading students' assignments. That means that uh, we actually look through the, the uh, help, help students go through the assignment before they hand it in to make sure there's no major, uh, 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 to, 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 to make sure that their assignment is on track, to make sure there's no, any, uh, there's, there's no major formatting issues or stuff like that, just to make sure students do well in their assessments. Okay, so uh, this is a service that obvi is, is obviously very, very popular in each, our, each of our campuses. Okay, next up uh, is our career center. Okay, I think, yep, our career center. All right, our career, as, as mentioned before, we understand that students are spending a lot of time and money coming over here to Australia, uh, not only to get their degree, but also hopefully to explore some sort of career, some sort of uh, employment opportunity. All right. So we want to make sure that we help students achieve that dream as well. Okay. So the main thing our career center do is to help students prepare internships and job placements. And like I said, regardless of what course you study with us, the internships and job placements are included into your course. All right. So instead of me going through and explaining what we do, actually, I have a, a video in our, in our next slide. Uh, I, this is just a short video explaining what our career center do. Okay. And this is a, basically a video from our, our general manager, which, which looks after our student experience. Okay. Okay, this is taking a while to load. Hopefully it will start soon. At Kaplan Business School, we know that one of the main reasons students come to study with us is to further their career. Employability is a buzzword for many people, but for us, we live and breathe it. Our National Careers Central team have just one purpose, and that's increasing our students' employability. But what are we doing that's different, that sets us apart? Key to our commitment in making students more employable is our investment into the Careers Central team. On a per capita basis, we have one of, if not the highest ratio of careers professionals to students. This allows us to deliver personalized, tailored advice to each individual student. This sizable investment enables us to provide a range of services completely free of charge. That includes editing CVs, holding mock interviews, creating A to Z job guides, making employer introductions, delivering comprehensive academic internship programs, hosting networking events across Australia, and much, much more. This incredible level of engagement leads to genuine outcomes with one in three students being offered ongoing paid employment upon completion of an academic internship and almost 90% of our students finding employment once they graduate. And the most important metric for us is always what our students think. With Careers Central rating 4.6 out of 5 in our regular trimester survey, amongst the highest in the entire organisation, we can feel truly confident in their ability to deliver employability outcomes for KBS students for years to come.
Okay, hopefully that short video uh, was a good snapshot of what we do at our career center. And you might be also interested to know that uh, our career center is a lifelong service, which means that uh, obviously we cater this service to uh, mainly to our students that are studying with us. But not only that, we also cater uh, and help students that are our alumni, our graduates. They can still come back and use any of our career services and join any one of our networking workshops and stuff like that as well. Okay. Okay. So last but not least, uh, I was. Uh, this is uh, one of our the our, our student experience services. Yeah. So these are the people, or uh, that students first meet when they first come to uh, join us at our school. Okay, uh, our student experience are located obviously right in front of campus. So whenever students come in, these are the first smiling faces that they'll see. All right, so we help students with basically anything under the sun in regards to campus life. Uh, we help them with their subject enrollments. We help them with organizing their timetable, uh, with any counseling services or advice that they will need uh, when they're here in Australia. Uh, talk about, we, we, we advise them about the local transport information, get them settled in into the Australian lifestyle, basically. Okay. Uh, and yeah, like I said, these are the people that uh, I guess when your students, when, when students start, these are the main uh, first point of contact uh, for the entire sort of uh, student uh, support network. Okay. All right. So next slide, we'll talk a little bit about online studies. All right, as we know now, obviously the Australian borders are, are, are still not open and uh, there's a lot of uh, questions of, uh, uh, in, in regards to that. Uh, but we here at Kaplan Business School are servicing our students that are stuck overseas, uh, obviously online uh, now. Uh, the good thing is that our business school, we have been teaching online for the past five to six years. All right. So when we needed, when the pandemic happened, when we needed to move most of our classes online, uh, it was it wasn't that hard for us because we had established platforms, we have the experience, we have experienced lecturers and tutors to deliver online classes, for example, and the resources to deliver online. Okay. So uh, uh, currently we have about sixty to seventy Filipino students, for example, studying online with us. Yeah, we have different incentives uh, that we provide our online students. And we always try to remind students that studying online doesn't mean that you are studying alone, doesn't mean that you are self-studying. Yeah, all the services that we, 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 we spoke about early in the earlier slides are all still available for our students that start online with us. Okay, in addition, we are also offering 20% extra uh, fee reduction. Yeah, and a reduced study load. That means students can choose to opt to study, start with one subject to reduce their uh, study load. Yeah, so these uh, uh, different initiatives uh, we are currently doing or have been doing for the past year to see how we can help students uh, start their study journey in Australia here with us. Okay, and with studying online as well, we uh, think that when the borders reopen, students that are studying online with us will also be prioritized to get back into Australia as well. All right. And we will talk about obviously the financial incentives uh, under the scholarship uh, area uh, a bit later on in the presentation. Okay. All right. So next, we'll actually move on to talk. To, uh, about our courses, the different courses that we offer. Obviously, all our courses will be uh, involving of business courses. Yeah. So here we have our undergraduate courses. Yeah. All our undergraduate courses, we actually accept students that uh, complete their senior high school in the Philippines. Yeah. The new K to 12 senior high school graduates. Yeah. Can uh, apply and directly uh, get into our bachelor degree or our diploma of business. Okay, as you can see here, we have, a, we have a Bachelor of Business General, we have uh, Accounting, we have Hospitality and Tourism Management, we have Management, Marketing, and last but not least, a Diploma of Business. Okay, I'll start with the Diploma of Business. It is a one-year higher education diploma. Okay, after finishing that one year of diploma, students can actually hop into our second year uh, of our bachelor degree if they want to further their studies into a bachelor level. Okay, so with all our bachelor degrees, they all only take three years. So I think that is one of the main advantages uh, when you graduate from high school to come and study straight away in Australia is that you can finish your business degree in three years. Whereas I believe if you do it in the Philippines, it will normally take one extra year, right? So uh, whether 
you're doing a Bachelor of Business, whether it's accounting, hospitality, management, marketing, it will be the same. Uh, you will complete it in three years. Okay. Uh, and in the next slide here, you uh, uh, it just illustrates uh, the, the basically the format of, of or, or, the, or the structure of the course. Yeah. And this is the same regardless of uh, what uh, major you choose. Yeah. So a Bachelor of Business, as you can see, year one, year two, year three, each year students will complete eight subjects. Yeah. Uh, and during year two is where students go into the different streams. Accounting students will more focus more on the accounting subjects. Marketing students will do more marketing subjects, management into management subjects, so on and so forth. Yeah. But in year one is where students normally study what we call the eight core business subjects. Yeah. So you study a little bit of everything to give you a good business sort of foundation. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where uh, earlier I mentioned after finishing a one year diploma, students can start actually jump into year two and year three of our Bachelor of Business as well. Okay. All right. So next, we'll have a look at our postgraduate uh, degrees. So our postgraduate degrees is where I think most of our Filipinos uh, uh, students are going into. Yeah, as you can see here, I bolded some of the courses uh, on this screen. You can, you can see we have quite a few postgraduate degrees, but the ones that are bolded are the more popular ones. Yeah, because these are the courses that are two years in duration. Yeah, uh, earlier, I think in the previous presentation, Rena she mentioned that if you study uh, in Australia, you'll be eligible for post-study work right. But to get that post-study work rights, you need to study in a course of minimum two years. All right, so I will be focusing on the courses uh, up on the screen here that are, two, are minimum two years in duration. All right, uh, as well as the first course right at the top there, our postgraduate qualifying program. All right, so uh, this is our postgraduate qualifying program. It's a short course, only four months, one trimester, yeah, and has five subjects. Okay, so uh, this course is designed for students that if you don't quite meet the end, uh, entry requirements directly into our postgraduate courses. Yeah, that means that if you are basically uh, maybe in the, in the past students that don't uh, co haven't complete their bachelor degree but have extensive work experience, they can apply for our PQP, our postgraduate qualifying program. Yeah, and after finishing this four month course, you will then be eligible to join our any of our postgraduate degrees. Okay, so it's sort of like a foundation course a stepping stone for students to prepare themselves before starting their postgraduate uh, studies with us. Okay, and like uh, as, as you can see, it's only a really, really short four month course. Uh, and in fact, we have, we, we, we are offering 100% scholarships uh, for this course for 2021, which I'll talk about more a little bit later as well. Okay, so, uh, Students that are interested in accounting, we have a master's of accounting that is two years, 16 subjects. Yeah, 13 of these subjects are core subjects and the other three are electives. Electives means that students can pick and choose what other subjects from other areas they're interested to complement their uh, master's degree. And most of these electives will be from our business analytics area. Yeah, so obviously uh, students that are interested to go into financial and management accounting here in Australia, uh, they will be doing this. Uh, and I think it's worth mentioning whether you're doing a bachelor degree in accounting or a master's degree in accounting, all our accounting courses are accredited by CPA Australia, ACCA, and CA. And these are all the uh, accreditation bodies for accounting here in Australia. So anyone that wants to be an accountant here in Australia must be accredited to, with, with one of them. And our course is all recognized by them. All right. So next we'll move on to our Masters of Business Analytics. All right, so anal Business Analytics has been a really, really popular course for the past two or three years. Yeah, it's, it's one of our relatively new courses. We just launched it last March, yeah. Uh, but in fact, the number of students in this course has uh, surpassed the, the number of students that we have in accounting. So as it, so you can see that it is a very, very, has been a really, really popular course for us the past year. Okay, so, uh, Masters of Business Analytics is not an overly technical course. That means it's not a data science course, so to speak. Yeah, It's not a mathematics course. It's not an IT. It's not a programming course. It's a course that we want to produce a graduate that understands what data and what information is important to extract. But not only that, how to use this data and information to make informed business decisions. 
Okay, as you can see, it's a two-year course, 13 core subjects, uh, to, and to be complemented by two uh, electives from our MBA program. All right, so again, I'll break on to a video, to uh, a short video, a short three-minute video uh, explaining what our business analytics course is about, okay? So here we go. Business analytics is often misunderstood. I will very briefly explain what it means, why businesses need experts in this field, and what potential jobs are out there. When it comes to business analytics, data scientists or statisticians try to find meaning in the data. And IT professionals, on the other hand, will build the infrastructure in order that you can retrieve or store the data. Whereas in business analytics, we use this data to make strategic business decisions with the aim to impact the company's bottom line. For example, a business analytics practitioner will notice that certain products are purchased on certain weekends and will ask why those products and why then? Can we sell similar products on those weekends? Our primary motivation is to understand how the data can be useful for business to gain competitive advantage. In the next five to six years, we'll have an additional one billion people online, bringing the total up to six billion people globally. These people's lives will be conducted to a large extent in the digital realm. Businesses will have no option but to engage with the digital world, to deal with the flood of digital data and make it part of their operation. Businesses will therefore need graduates with a business mindset who understand the data, understand business and are able to communicate the usefulness of that data to their corporate leaders. Let's talk about three broad categories of jobs in business analytics, all centered around understanding customer behavior. The first one is as a marketing analyst, perhaps trying to understand which groups of people are likely to buy which product. For example, if you're a media company streaming sports, viewers of different sports will probably buy different products, but we need to forecast which products. Another big area of data will be in government, who need to understand the flow of resources, the requirement of transport infrastructure, and match that to the needs of the public and industry especially in those countries growing rapidly. Finally, financial services are becoming globally interconnected and there is a huge need to understand transactional data, the movement of money and assets, and the growing number of global regulatory requirements. Digital data is going to be the main way we understand people's behaviour. So we need a base level of understanding of what tools business analytics can provide to business. However, these techniques are useless if a graduate doesn't understand how a business works, what their needs are, and how different parts of a business interact. Finally, to bring that together, graduates need soft skills to communicate data insights and to influence and encourage businesses to take the huge opportunities that business analytics provides. The Master of Business Analytics at Kaplan Business School gives you all three of these perspectives. An understanding of business analytics tools in a supported example-based format without overemphasizing the technical. That will be taken care of by data scientists. A background to business disciplines like marketing and finance and the opportunity to develop creativity and soft skills so that the student can speak to both the business and the data scientist and create real value through data initiatives. Okay. Yeah, so hopefully that short video was uh, helpful as well. Uh, just giving you an understanding what business analytics at Kaplan Business School is. Uh, so last but not least, we'll move on to our flagship course, uh, which means that this is uh, the course that we get actually most, a lot of our students is, is our most popular course, uh, our Masters of Business Administration. Yeah, our MBA is a two-year MBA with 12 subjects. Yeah, uh, but our MBA is unique because we allow students to craft an MBA to suit their needs with uh, various different specializations. When students study an MBA with us, they don't just get an generic or a general MBA. We have a series of specializations, yeah, uh, that we have that allow students to basically, uh, yeah, see what 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 uh, what they need and what they're interested in and craft the MBA uh, depending on their interests, okay? So uh, 
I'll move on to the next slide. I'll quickly skip this one. So these are the specializations that we have in our MBA. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, we have a series of eight different specializations. Yeah, uh, we have project management, health services management, tourism and hospitality leadership, digital management, women in leadership, international leadership, entrepreneurship, and our latest one that we will we are going to launch this July, data-driven leadership. All right, uh, I'll start with data-driven leadership since it is our latest specialization. Data-driven leadership is very, very similar to the business analytics area that we spoke about a bit earlier. Okay, so uh, it's for students that if you don't want to do a full two years on a business analytics course, you can still do an MBA and specialize in data driven leadership. So that way students will get a piece of uh, understanding in the business analytics area, which will really help them obviously gain an advantage uh, when they're applying for a job that is related, that have some uh, relation into that uh, business analytics area. Okay. So like I mentioned, since we've introduced specializations in the MBA, we really attracted students from a lot of different academic and employment background. Yeah, for example, we get a lot of uh, uh, engineering and IT students involved in project and MBA in project management. Okay, uh, if someone has studied engineering, has been an engineer for the past few years, what they need to take the next step, all right, is to obviously uh, if they, if, to get the management and leadership skills, the strategy, the strategy management skills, right? And our MBA will give them that, yeah? But they can still do project management, which is highly related to what they are doing as an engineer, which is mostly managing projects, right? Yeah, same goes to health services management. We get a lot of students that have been uh, nursing students in the past, aged care, welfare students, students that maybe want to manage their own facility, become a healthcare administrator in the future. Our MBA in health services management will be perfect for them. All right. Uh, we get a lot of marketing and IT students interested in digital management, for example, students that want to work in government that want to work in a multinational company in the future will be interested in international leadership, right? So stu uh, st you, students can choose not only one specialization, but they can in fact choose two specializations to complement their MBA, yeah. So even though students choose two uh, specializations, the course will still be two years, they will still only study 12 subjects and the price will still be the same, all right? So it's really up to the student uh, of what they want, whether they want to do uh, one specialization or two is really up to them. Okay, and this, like I said, will give them a real advantage when they go, go out and look for employment, they can confidently go out and say, I have an MBA, but not only that, I have specializations in this area, which uh, hopefully will be in, uh, related to what they are uh, to the job that they are applying for. Okay. All right, so that is our MBA. And uh, We'll move on to our next slide here, which gives a broad overview of the entry requirements uh, to come study with us. Okay, so I'll, uh, long story short, yeah, I'll give you a sort of a simplified version. Students that finish their senior high school here, uh, well, back in, in the Philippines, are eligible to apply for our Diploma of Business or our Bachelor of Business. Yeah, uh, students that are interested to study in our master's degree will need to have completed a bachelor degree in the Philippines, okay? Uh, if students haven't achieved that, then they can go through, uh, like I mentioned earlier, our postgraduate qualifying program first for four months. After doing that four months, after doing this short course, then you can jump into our postgraduate degree, okay? Uh, English or uh, English requirement or IELTS requirement is also pretty straightforward. Uh, our diploma and PQP postgraduate qualifying program will have a 5.5 IELTS equivalent, whereas our bachelor degrees and master degrees all have a six, IELTS 6.0 uh, English uh, entry requirement equivalent. Okay, uh, doesn't mean that you must do an IELTS. We also accept Pearson's, we also accept TOEFL, or we also have our in-house online placement test that we can provide students. And this is a free test. And if students pass that test, they can use this uh, in lieu of any other formal English test as well. All right. Okay, so the next slide here shows an uh, 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 overview of uh, uh, our tuition fees. 
Okay, so the one at the far right is the tuition fees for the entire course. Okay, as you can see here, a Bachelor of Business that is three years uh, will cost about 54,000. Yeah, uh, whereas a master's course will be about 40 to 45,000. Yeah, a master's of accounting, for example, uh, will be about 43,000, whereas an MBA uh, will be about 45,600. Okay, uh, so this also ties in really well to my, to my next slide, which is our scholarships. All right, so the slide before is uh, the prices before any scholarships are applied, but most uh, international students that study with us from the Philippines do have some some form of scholarship. Yeah, so we have uh, the most two most popular is our Asia and our High Achiever Scholarship, which is ten and thirty percent respectively. Both of these scholarships are merit based scholarships. That means that we will look at the grades that you achieved in your previous studies. Yeah, and depending on the grades, we will then recommend you uh, either a ten percent Asia scholarship, or if you have done really well in your previous studies, then we can actually provide you a thirty percent uh, High Achievers scholarship. Okay, uh, we also have an alumni scholarship, yeah, uh, which means that any student that studied with any of our Kaplan business uh, before can come back and study at our business school at, and get a 30% scholarship. All right. The fourth scholarship here is also one that is very, very popular with our Filipino students uh, called our Frontline Healthcare Leadership Scholarship, all right, which is a very generous 50% scholarship. To be eligible for this scholarship, students need to be applying for our MBA in Health Services Management that we talked about uh, earlier. Yeah, and they need to have uh, show some form of employment in the healthcare industry within the last fifteen months. Okay, so if any students have any sort of work experience in the healthcare industry, they're eligible to apply for this scholarship. Uh, uh, if they are applying, obviously, for our MBA in health services management. Yeah, uh, this is a scholarship that we designed to show our appreciation and to show our thank you to all the healthcare workers that have been working and risking their lives for the past 15 months uh, at the front line. Yeah, so uh, we have a list of occupations that are eligible to apply for this scholarship. And uh, we also, this list is also quite generous. Uh, it not only includes uh, nurses, doctors, obviously, are the obvious ones. But we also include uh, other occupations such as mental health workers, welfare workers, uh, aged care workers. Uh, we also include uh, at, at, uh, 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 clinic at, uh, uh, admin staff, yeah, receptionists that work in the uh, healthcare industry. All these occupations are all included that can apply for this scholarship. All right? Yeah. So the fifth one here is our online offshore fee reduction of 20%. All right, so any students that if you think that uh, you want to start your study journey with us online while waiting for the borders to reopen, we are actually offering an additional 20% fee reduction on top of the scholarships that you get, okay? Uh, as mentioned earlier, our postgraduate qualifying program, we are also offering 100% scholarship, okay? So this course typically will be uh, worth 7,500 Australian dollars. But for this year, we are actually offering it at 100% scholarship for any students that are interested to study with us uh, for in 2021, yeah? Uh, last but not least, any students that need the additional English to improve their English, yeah, before starting their course with us, we are also offering 10 weeks of free English course, yeah, uh, of EAP. EAP means English for Academic Purposes. Yeah, so in this course, we'll obviously improve your mainly focus on the writing skills or the presentation skills uh, to, to, to get students prepared, polish up their English before they start study with us in either a bachelor or a master's degree. Okay, all right. Yeah, so for the next few slides, uh, earlier we talked about the career center, uh, the job placements, uh, the internships that we offer, right? So for the next three slides are uh, just some of the companies that we work with here, our host companies that we work with here, here closely with uh, to organize these internships and work placements. As you can see, we work with Novotel, the Marriott for our hospitality and tourism uh, students. Uh, we work with PWCEY for accounting students, for, for example, CPA. Uh, uh, IPA for uh, with, with uh, accounting students. You can see that we work with a, 
a series of different uh, Australian companies based here across all, all our five campuses. Yeah. So again, with uh, with our business school, we really uh, uh, want to make sure that students not only achieve uh, and get a qualification here with us, but we really want to help them in their career space as well, making sure that they have their industry exposure, they have their Australian work experience uh, before they graduate. All right. All right. So, uh, I have a last video here. Uh, this, is, this is a student testimonial from one of our Filipino students. And uh, after that, I think we will then break into uh, for questions. All right. Studying MBA has allowed me to learn about business trends and business processes, so it will help me provide solutions and to become an effective manager and a good leader. The community at KBS is very friendly, uh, accommodating, which is good for international students because it helps us to adjust in a new learning environment. and small class sizes help me uh, have a better discussions with my lecturer and also the classmates. So it's a good uh, learning environment for us. One of the best things about it is that our lecturers are industry experts. I had lecturers who worked in consulting, uh, finance and hospitality. So they gave us real life examples of the theories that we're learning in class. As a student ambassador, it gave me a chance to interact well with the students and teachers and also the staff. So it helped me to become a proactive member of the KBS community. If I have to describe KBS in three words, that will be the best experience ever. Okay, so that was Joanna. Yeah, so Joanna uh, is one of our MBA students that graduated, I think, in uh, 2019. And in fact, uh, she is now employed with us, yeah, working with us at Kaplan. So one of our really, really bright students that are studying in, that studied in our uh, Adelaide campus. Yeah. All right, so I guess now, uh, yeah, that's it from me in terms of the presentation. So uh, are there any questions? Um, yeah, um, Yong, before we go into some other questions, by the way, um, thank you very much for that very wonderful presentation. So um, I just want to share a little bit more of information um, to our students. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to like share what are the basic requirements, the cost, and whatever that they need to know. All right, so yes, okay, all done. There you go. All right, thanks, Yong. So, uh, yeah, back to my presentation earlier. Um, okay, so since we, uh, um, Yong has already discussed basically about Kaplan Business School, their programs, and what are the entry requirements and such. So we just want to, to um, further explain what are the process of the student visa. So basically, the first step, um, we, we have simplified we have simplified it for you guys. So first would be counseling and initial assessment. Uh, second, enroll into a course and school of your own choosing. So um, I know Kaplan has very uh, good programs and very um, affordable as compared to other universities as well in Australia. Um, the next um, thing to do is of course pay your tuition fee and other payables. And the next thing would be lodging your visa. So uh, going into more details. So just want to share this screen to you. So um, this is basically, um, like um, a complete information of what you should know about um, your, your requirements and cost and how are you going to study in Australia. So, okay, so like I've said earlier, the first one is, of course, the initial counseling and, um, yeah, basically for us to figure out your um, course that is fit for your profile, ano po ba yung pwede niyong kunin sa Australia, 
basically ganun. So, iba't iba po yan per tao. So, for example, mag-isa lang po ba kayo or gusto nyo po bang dalhin yung family nyo? So, doon natin po, mag, doon po tayo magkakaroon ng discussion um, in terms of doon sa um, ano po ba yung parang pinakabagay po na program po para sa inyo. So, basically, that's step one. And then, the step two would be the collection of your requirements. So, basically, ano po ba ang requirements natin? So, that would be your resume, passport, diploma, transcript of records, certificate of employment, birth certificate, police clearance, <clears throat> sorry, um, your statement of purpose. So, basically, MSA will be helping you out on how do you, um, how or give you a guideline on how you should write your statement of purpose. And, of course, to be checked by Kaplan Business School if sa, in, sa kanila po tayo mag-enroll. Um, English exam. So, nasabi po ni Yong earlier that uh, meron sila mga IELTS um, test score. But, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Yong. Um, that they can actually take an internal English test, right? Like a Kaplan internal test in English um, as a replacement for IELTS, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, because I do have one student actually for Kaplan Business School who um, actually took the kite exam. So, um, medyo, I, I'm not sure, but sometimes Filipinos are scared kasi to take the exam in IELTS. So, um, this is one of like um, an easier or basically like a way for, for para hindi na kayo mag-IELTS or mag test of English is pag nag-enroll kayo sa Kaplan Business School is pwede kayo mag-take ng kahit exam nila. So, yun yung isa sa magandang benefits nun. And then, pagka-licensyado po sila dito, kailangan po natin ng license, marriage certificate pag married. Um, so, yun, ang basic ito po yung mga basic requirements po natin sa main applicant kung sino po yung magsa-study sa Australia. So, after po natin makulik yung requirements, dito na po tayo papasok sa enrollment and for us to receive receive a letter of offer. So basically, this letter of offer is a document from the school. Po. So the topong letter of offer is basically a document from the school which states like the conditions of your offer, that um, ano po yung mga kail uh, may expect ninyo, what are you, when is your commencement, magkano yung babayaran nyo, how are you going to pay it. So basically, yun yung laman ng letter of offer. All right? So once the, for example, inaccept nyo ang letter of offer, so we accept it by signing it and paying your tuition fee. So magkano po ba yung babayaran natin? Or um, usually they will ask for the first semester payment only. Yun muna ang kailangan ninyong bayaran. You don't have to pay for the whole year. Um, you only have to pay for the first semester. And your overseas student health cover or yung health insurance. So mandatory po kasi sir and ma'ams na lahat po ng international student and Sorry, and they're dependent po na magkaroon po ng health insurance, okay? So once po na nakapagbayad na po tayo ng tuition fee and health insurance, may marireceive po tayo na tinatawag natin na confirmation of enrollment. So confirmation of enrollment basically is um, para a document that the school will issue once you have they have received your payment already. And the next thing to do is of course complete your medicals and lodge your visa. So sa medicals po, there are only uh, five accredited clinics here in the Philippines. So two in Manila, one in Baguio, one in Cebu, and one in Davao. So Yun lang po yung mga accredited clinics. That's why you don't, you cannot actually go like into a clinic lang and then, you know, have your checkups done. Uh, we do have like a process on that as well. So we are here, MSA is here to help you all throughout the process. And um, the let's say pag nag tayo ng visa and the, the, the visa has already came out, um, magkakaroon tayo ng pre-departure orientation. So I have mentioned earlier that we do have additional services. So as such as pagka, sa pre-departure po natin is we can give you like assistance on how to book your accommodation, your airport pickup, and ano po ba yung do's and don'ts, what should you bring, what are ano. So yun po yung mga kailangan natin na um, i-discuss with you guys. So basically, um, this amount here is just an approximate, okay? Dito po sa my actual fees. So this is only an approximate. So um, if you guys want to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation, of course, definitely we would like to talk to you para malaman nyo po how much would you be spending um, uh, like approximately. So again, itong, um, it, we do charge a professional 15,000, sorry, Sorry, na move siya. 
uh, tuition fee po, actually this is quite high it's because I took um, a tuition fee na, na average po sa Australia but for Kaplan Business School is way cheaper. So aside from dun sa mga, um, aside sa mas cheaper ang scholarship with Kaplan Business School is that they do also offer scholarships. I have students who have um, applied for scholarships and the same um, usually parang uh, ang cost lang na binayaran niya is the same as you know enrolling into a vocational program in Australia so um, yun yung amount niya so it's already a master's degree or it's already a higher education degree but yet you are paying in a much lesser cost okay so it's a much much lesser cost again if you want to um, a consultation because we can give you the exact um, not like the exact but Basically, like, um, kind of, if you're considering Kaplan Business School, how much are you going to pay um, in terms of subscription fee? But everything else, basically, it's um, quite the same, such as your health insurance. If you're a single student, you'll be spending around 37,000 pesos on your health insurance. Medical examinations are around 65. Visa fee, um, 22,940. Um, again, if you're studying at Kaplan Business School, you can opt not to do your IELTS, but you can actually take yung kite exam nila. So this can be actually be waived off. Your airfare approximately siguro magagastos nyo in one way is around 25,000. So ito is only average. Again, remember it's only average. We can give you a computation on how much pagka nagbook po kayo na one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. All right. So, um, all right. So I guess it's time for our question and answer portion. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, let's start off with the, the first question in here, Mr. Domingo. Um, please help me know if I am still qualified to study in Australia. I will be 53 this September. Thank you. Um, okay, so for Mr. Domingo Capuli, uh, junior, we don't, or Australia actually do not have like a discrimination in terms of age. Wala pong age limit ang studying in Australia. So uh, to answer your question, if you are qualified to study, yes, but then um, you have to prove why you still want to study and we have to look at your background if it's like quite, um, kumbaga, uh, what do you call this? Um, Consistent po ba yung background niyo into the program that you're wanting to study in Australia or bakit niyo po gustong mag-aral sa Australia? So there are many factors on that. But basically, no, wala po tayong age limit if you want to do um, or study in Australia po. All right. So, um, okay. Uh, okay, so any more question, guys? Please do not hesitate to, uh, to ask questions. Um, I have a question actually for Yong. So, Yong, um, okay, can, can you, um, like, oh, yep, yep, okay, so yeah, hold on. So, a question for you actually. So, from princess so i'm sorry but mr young was cutting in and out earlier just want to know if they cater to business finance program or what do you think is the best fit program for miss princess ah okay ah okay um, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of echo uh basically uh, basically uh, we, uh, we don't i actually have a finance for postgraduate students uh, but we do have one in the uh, undergraduate area, which uh, involves obviously quite a few uh, finance subjects. But we finance a lot of students will opt to go into the accounting area, uh, mostly because with uh, graduates from finance in Australia, typically uh, to, to, to start get work in the finance area will need to have some sort of register. Uh, uh, residency, okay, to get into the finance sector. So uh, most of our students that are interested in that area will do the accounting area. So because it's a it's a more a probable pathway into residency, uh, and then after that go into finance after uh, once once they get residency. So it, it hasn't been a really really popular area uh, 
for international students. So that's why we actually don't offer uh, a postgraduate course exclusive, uh, exclusively for finance. Yeah, but if students are interested in the area, most likely they will go into the Masters of Accounting uh, and go into financial accounting. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, Princess. So, yeah, um, basically, um, yun yung pinaka-perfect na program as per Mr. Yong. All right, so the next question is from Mary Joy Parafina. So, um, I think this question, I could answer this question. Are you affiliated to other schools for master's degree in education or bachelor of education and elementary education po kasi ang natapos niya? So, yes, we are uh, partners. So, I think Miss um, Pauline can answer also this one or you can give more insights on this one as well. So, Miss Pauline, are you still here? Hi. Yes. Um. For for the um education and teaching programs, we have other we have other affiliated partner schools. But for for this afternoon for Kaplan Business School, they only offer all um because this is uh Kaplan is a very specified school, so it's all for business exactly. only. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm sure MSA can help you. Uh, they can give you other options for for your background or for your profile. All right. So yes, that's correct. Uh, Miss uh, Mary Joy. So, um, yeah. So as you know, KBS is a business. Uh, it's a business school. So basically, they don't they don't offer this program. But yes, we can um give you a different um option on a separate. Um, conversation so I would suggest for you to book an appointment with us so we can give you options as well and we can discuss your um, benefits and whatnot all right so um, so from Miss Diane Abigail Napolis so hi just wondering which business program is suitable for a BS interior design graduate so young um, could you um, give your insight on this one Yes, yeah, definitely a interesting question. So I guess mm -hmm. uh, without uh, knowing more, I assume that uh, after completing your uh, degree in interior design, you would probably do work-related work in that area. If so, I would say, uh, yeah, an MBA, let's say in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. might be something that uh, you want to, you, 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 you might want to do because obviously that will give you uh, a different skill set to what you already have. Yeah, obviously from the MBA, you'll be learning about uh, management styles, you'll be learning about leadership, about strategy, uh, stuff like that. And uh, most likely the next step of your career or the next step in your, in, in your area is to hopefully start your own uh, interior design firm or, or come out and do something yourself. And entrepreneurship will give you that, 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 that sub skill set. Yeah. So in the in our MBA in entrepreneurship, you'll be probably learning about uh, how to start a small business, how to uh, manage and, and deal with different people, how to uh, uh, get get investors to 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 invest in your company, stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, like uh, without knowing more about your employment background, I would say uh, the most related one would be an MBA in entrepreneurship. Okay. Thanks, Young. So I hope that answers um, your question, um, Miss um, Diane. I sorry, uh, yeah, Miss Diane. All right. So another question from Erica, Jane. Um, also, can we submit our applications now for the twenty twenty two intake so we can get our offer letter and how much is the initial payment? Uh, yes, Erica, that's a good question. And the uh, short answer is yes. Yeah. So there's no harm uh, sort of starting your application early. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's free to apply with us, I guess. With, we don't charge from, from our side, don't have an application fee, so to speak. So there's no harm starting early. Uh, that way we can, like you said, provide you an offer letter. And on that offer letter, obviously, we will state uh, how much that you, you, you need to pay to get your confirmation of enrollment. Uh, typically, it's the first trimester fees. Yeah, first trimester fees will be uh, normally about two, two subjects if you're studying an MBA and three subjects if you're studying any other master's or bachelor degree. Okay, uh, having said that, if students are interested to apply in 2021, that means uh, our next intakes will be July, September, and uh, November. Uh, we do have 
uh, special that we are doing for 2021, which is a $2,500 deposit. Yeah, so you only need to pay $2,500 and uh, we can then go ahead and process a confirmation of enrollment for, uh, for you. Yeah, so uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, Erica, just an, an additional on that one. So I do have actually students who have asked, enrolled for the trimester three of this year. So that's around November. Um, so, but then of course with the pandemic that's ongoing, she's yet to decide if she wants to study online or want to move for 2022. But then she actually applied early this year. So around like January. So as you can see, there's a long, um, there's yet a long time like. Uh, before her intake or before her commencement but then she already started and she was also able to get like a regional scholarship so I just also wanted to ask Kyung if um, is it still open the regional scholarship is it still open for um, students who are enrolling to Kaplan in regional areas? Uh, yeah yeah well actually uh, the scholarship will be same in any of our campuses I think oh, that okay. the, the, the region the regional word is uh, uh, implying the Asia region. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so in, in uh, going into 2022, uh, the Asian leadership, uh, the, the, the regional Asia leadership uh, scholarship, sorry, as well as the high achiever scholarship will very, very likely continue and stay the same because those are the scholarships that we typically have and we have had that for the past few years. So I wouldn't imagine that will change. Yes, so we will still have those scholarships. Yeah, so any scholarships that uh, are on our website right now. And like uh, I spoke before in our presentation, we'll, we'll, we'll mostly bring forward to 2022. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Yong. So, okay, so from Abigail. Hi, sorry, I joined late, that's okay. May I know which program is suited for a Bachelor of Science in IT graduate? So yeah, um, I, yeah, since she missed the, um, probably most part of your, um, Presentation, yeah, I think, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, yeah, very good question as well. Uh, so again, uh, a lot of times it also depends on what what type of uh, work you've been doing after you graduated from IT and what type of work you want to do in the future, right? So, uh, but very, very popular with a lot of IT students coming into business it would be our Masters of Business Analytics, yeah, or our MBA. Uh, in project management, or some of them uh, go into a dual specialization and MBA in digital management as well as project management. Yeah, uh, because yeah, a lot of students in IT basically have uh, what we call a very strong technical skills already, right? You've graduated mm -hmm. from IT, you probably worked in that area before. So you want a degree or a master's degree that complement the skills that you already have. And uh, either one of these, I think master's, uh, whether it's a uh, masters of Business Analytics, or in our MBA, uh, again, depending on what you want, what, what type of area if you want, want to go to. If you are sort of doing and managing IT projects, then maybe project management is suitable for you. If you are more into IT in terms of the marketing area, then maybe digital management. Uh, again, you can go into our MBA in data-driven leadership if you want an MBA and still do analytics. Uh, so yeah, uh, and the beauty about the specializations is also you can still change it, okay? So let's say you apply for an MBA in digital management, okay? Once you start your MBA, uh, after one or two trimesters, you think that, oh, maybe data-driven leadership is more suitable for me. Maybe that's what I want to get into in the future. You can still change because our specialization subjects normally only start in the second year of your MBA. So as long as you uh, haven't started the second year, you can still change your specialization, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can really sort of uh, mix and match and see how you want to craft an MBA that 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 is uh, related uh, to the degree in IT that you've done before. All right. So, thanks for that, Kyom. So, I just wanted to um, answer quick questions here about like a general questions for MSA. So, for the uh, for the actual fees required, um, I, I have showed you a slide earlier. Like, what are the fees that you have to consider, such as your um, airfare and whatnot, um, and tuition fee. So again, we will be sending that 
um, information to you if you want to do an online consultation with us. Again, it's different for, for every person. Iba't iba po ang gastos pag iba-iba po ang tao. Depende rin po yan sa course. So iba-iba po yan. Um, another question from Princess po, uh, follow-up questions. Yes po, halos lahat po ng course is we are offering it in Australia. So the, these are available po. So um, yes, um, again, uh, please book um, a consultation with us. Um, Erica Jane, the Isla, do offer letter expire? Do offer letters expire? Uh, oh yes, obviously. Uh, the short answer is yes. I guess it expires after I guess the start date. <laughs> like uh, obviously, uh, on on when we issue an offer letter, we have a start date and an end date, and uh, our our offer our offer letters are quite flexible, as in uh, it doesn't expire until the start date has passed. Okay, when mm -hmm. when a student is supposed to start. So uh, I guess that would be the short answer after the course commencement date. Yeah. yeah. So um, another follow up question from Erica um, mm -hmm. as well is that how many subjects usually they ha you have per trimester and how many school days do they actually have per week? Like, let's say if they're like doing onshore or online program. Ah, yes, yes, that is a uh, uh, very good question because there's a lot of misconception about studying in Australia sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah. So we go uh, early in the present presentation. I mentioned we go by a trimester. Okay. That means that uh, every intake or trimester that you join will typically be four months. Uh, in four months' time, I, a, a full time student with us typically will be doing two or three subjects. Okay, if you're an MBA student, you actually need to do two subjects. If you're accounting analytics student, you do three subjects. To put it into perspective, one subject in terms of class time is only three hours a week. Okay, three hours a week for each subject. So let's say you're doing three subjects, that means nine hours a week of class time. Okay, uh, with us, our class times are Monday to Friday, there's no weekend classes. Yeah, and uh, I would say on average, students will come to campus twice a week for their classes because let's say you're doing three subjects, normally students will put one in the morning, one in the evening, and then another subject in an, on another day. Yeah, so I would say on average, one or two days would be the time, would be students traveling into campus to do their class time. Yeah, so uh, if you're doing an MBA, for example, two subjects, that means six hours a week of class time and that is it yeah so uh studying in australia is very different yeah i think studying in the philippines sometimes if yeah <laughs> you if you study a master's you'll be studying monday to friday and sometimes on saturday right so it's pretty jam-packed whereas studying in australia is pretty common for students to yeah considered full-time students to be doing uh two or three subject study load because it's very common for the australian students to work and support themselves putting them through their their their, their uh, their own studies yeah so uh yeah so that's the culture i guess which is which is really really different and maybe i should mention this as well uh with students studying online especially during this climate this pandemic climate uh we have about 70 filipino students studying online with us and most of them are on a reduced study loads which means they are studying one subject each trimester yeah, and if you think, if students think that, oh, maybe studying online is a lot of work, I'm still working full time, stuff like that. But always remember, you're only doing three hours. If you're doing one subject, you're only doing three hours of class per week. Yeah, so uh, what I'm trying to say is quite manageable in terms of juggling full time work potentially and doing one subject uh, online while waiting for the borders to reopen. And yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the other interesting thing that we did was, is we also introduced an evening class for our students from Southeast Asia. That means that uh, we've, uh, the past trimester, we had a class at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, uh, Manila time. So just to cater for students that are stuck overseas to finish work and then come to class after that, yeah. Yeah, that's that's actually great, um, and that's a good um, 
um, like program for Filipinos. So thank you for that, Young, and of course, Kaplan Business School. Um, all right, so moving on. So another question from Diane Abigail. Did I understand it correctly? Is there a work permit for students and can we work while taking a course? Um, yes, I um, basically you will be holding a student visa, but you are entitled to work 40 hours per fortnight or sa atin sa Pilipinas, we call it sa quincenas. So in every 15 days, parang ganon. So some people kasi they say it as 20 hours per week, but that's quite wrong. I mean, if you, can, if you want to divide it like 20 hours per week, that's okay. Okay, but usually it's that, that the correct term is like 40 hours per fortnight and then unlimited po ang work rights natin during holidays, vacation, and semestral breaks. So um, that's one thing for that you have to remember. Um, what? Okay, so I think um, this could be like um, a, a sharing um, like answers for me and Yon. So um, what are the kinds of work that we can do while studying? So I would want probably to um, let Yong uh, to answer this one, this question first. Yes, sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, another very good question because, uh, look, a lot of times international students think that, yeah, well, uh, I'm going to invest in my studies the next two years. I'll be going to Australia, maybe work in a retail or a cafe to get some pocket money while I'm studying. But I actually encourage students to look at it, in, at it a different way. Uh, because at our business school, for example, we have a really, really strong career center, yeah, which basically dedicated to help students achieve their career dreams. And a lot of times we see from our Filipino students that you guys have a lot of work experience in your home country. Yeah. So, uh, yes, the working culture or is, is, is different from, from Asia. If you come to Australia, obviously there's differences, but there's also a lot of similarities that uh, you can actually transfer those skills when you come to Australia as well. So don't think that you're limited to just work retail, work in cafes, just to get some uh, part-time and, and pocket money. A lot of our Filipino students, they come once they start study with us, during the first and second week, we encourage them to come to talk to our career advisors. So what we can do is that once we will get your resume from you, we will then do some career counseling and career coaching with you and see what opportunities are out there for you. Yeah. So for example, uh, the, if you are in, in, in have, if you have done, I don't know, uh, uh, marketing before or IT, yeah. And if, when you come to Australia, you want to explore those work opportunities, we can actually start helping you. As long as you come to us, talk to our career advisors, we can start have uh, arranging job placements, uh, we can start uh, introducing into those certain industries so that you get more exposure and in fact, hopefully get a job uh, that is related to your career. So don't just think that your career is, is stopped because you're coming to study in Australia. Think about it as that because Australia gives you work rights, because you have post-study work rights as well, uh, think about it that way. Yeah, there's a lot of transferable skills and in fact, a lot of employers here also really value uh, international students and the experience, the different perspective that they bring from overseas. Yeah, so uh, we have a lot of successful students. If they are proactive, come and speak to our careers advisors so that as soon as possible, we can help you uh, basically uh, usher you into the industry and see whether there's any work opportunity there. Uh, and it's actually quite common for employers to hire, let's say, an office job that, uh, that is a part-time. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it's actually very pre pretty common to hire part-time workers here, even in 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 in, in full-time roles. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's that's like uh, the perspective of, of you all as well. So thanks, you all for that um, answer. So um, he, like uh, I would also want to share like the perspective of the students that I have actually sent previously. Um, is uh, like basically yung mga types na mga part-time nila um, aside from the admin tasks or the office jobs that uh, Yung was mentioning earlier, they actually work in um, hospitality industries such as um, restaurants, hotels, or sometimes they go fruit picking. So that's actually quite fun. Um, so yes, and 
there's a lot of um, other part-time activities and there's no discrimination whatsoever there for people who are actually working part-time because even the domestic students are also working like even at a younger age much younger actually than Filipinos so um so yeah I mean basically you can um like what we actually tell our students is as much as possible if you're starting then try to like um, not be picky, probably sa part-time. But then, of course, later on, if you know, like, yung mga twists and turns of Australia, then probably look at a program or, a, a, um, like, a, a, a work that is mostly or related to your um, work experience or your um, education background. So, okay. Um, all right. So, are we all eligible for scholarship? So it depends on your profile. So again, we would really recommend you to um, go and book an appointment with us so we will know. So we only we will be answering the remaining question, uh, the remaining three questions, or we will be picking the last three questions before um, uh, moving on into the next slides and of course ending this um, um, webinar. So I will be picking the last three, or I think there are just three as well that are in here as well. So from Christian and Richard, do I need the ACS skills assessment while studying in Australia? So if we, um, um, I think um, you should be speaking to our migration agent with regards to this one, if you're looking into like a direct migration. So um, that will be again for another um, conversation, um, Christian and Richard. So, all right, um, okay, um, from, okay, the last question that I will be taking up for today would be from Erica Jane. I'm a graduate of business administration. Is it okay to take MPA instead of MBA, even if I don't have an accounting or background experience? So, Yong, what's your take on this? Yeah, thanks, Erica. Uh, so, yeah, interesting question. I guess it really depends on, uh, why you want to study the Masters of Professional Accounting. Uh, if, you, if, if you can sort of relate why you want to study, how it will help you in the future, uh, obviously, then we, you, you, you can look at uh, that as one of your course options. Uh, but for MBA graduates already, uh, it's also very popular that they are coming to study our Masters of Business Analytics. Yeah, uh, maybe that one will be a bit more related to MBA graduates, because with the analytics area, right, it's an uh, area that basically any industry is, uh, is, 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 is looking for these days. Yeah, uh, they are looking for graduates or professionals with analytical skills. And we have a lot of students that are MBA graduates apply for the Masters of Business Analytics because of that, instead of going to the accounting area, which you, uh, they might have no interest to do in the future at all. Uh, having said that, because our MBA have different specializations, like I explained before, you might be also interested to apply for the MBA and go into these different specializations. Because uh, with specializations, you can justify that you're going into a different course that focuses on those different specializations. Yeah, so for example, you completed an MBA before. Yeah, but when you come and apply and study an MBA in project management or international leadership, you can say that this MBA gives you a slightly different perspective compared to the MBA that you've done before. Because you're going into uh, yeah, uh, more, more specific areas that can might help you in the future. Yeah. So again, uh, maybe it's uh, when we get to, I guess, do a bit more personal counseling and get to know what you want to do and what you've done before, then we can figure out sort of the best match in terms of the, the, the course area. But with it, to answer directly your question with accounting, yeah, normally, if you're really interested to go into the area or uh, have some background in the area, then only you apply for that accounting area because accounting can be a really, it's a sort of uh, you 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 either really lo love it or you really hate it kind of course. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I I agree with you. So yeah, so basically, um, I just wanted to um give more um input to you guys. So 
um, after your studies. So as you mentioned earlier that you have to study actually a minimum two year program in Australia to be able to stay in Australia further to get a full study working visa um, program. Like for example, if you enroll in with Kaplan Business School. So um, we have to consider two years, minimum two years of studies before you are eligible to take up or to get the post-study working visa. Ibig sabihin, after nyo pong mag-aral, di po kayo uwi. Mayroon po tayong pwede, ibang visa na pwede nyo pong applyan. Alright. So, um, moving on to the um, next part. So, I just want to give a quick background to everyone. So, um, what what makes MSA Immigration different uh, out of other um, agencies? So, um, the first, of course, we take time to understand the personal needs and challenges of people or clients. That's why we, we really would like to recommend you to book a consultation with us. It's because what we're talking about right now are quite general and it's it would take us forever if we discuss like one-on-one -on -one, um, all together in this webinar. All right. So we want to understand you. We want to give you the best program that suits you. And of course, that is um, in your budget as well. All right. So. Um, we also um, we also pride, proud, pride ourselves with like rigorous research backed by our Australian regulation law and international education language. So, we, uh, so myself and um, the migration or Miss Marie um, Tendia is uh, has been in this industry for a few years now. Sorry, a lot of years now. So uh, yeah, it's still a continuous um, learning for us as well. But then yes, uh, we have processed lots of visas previously, and um, uh, we it's also what basically uh, we also like. Um, Pride ourselves with different connections to Australian society and embracing our culture. So um, the three directors, Steve, Adam, and Miss Marie are all Australian, but they're from actually different places. So Steve is from Canada. Miss Marie is actually Filipina, uh, who migrated in Australia. And Adam is, of course, an uh, Australian. So yeah, and uh, we also like, um, uh, so for the next slide, um, we just want to remind everyone that you please contact us for any questions or book an appointment with us. So if for anyone who ha who is in Australia or who knows anyone in Australia who um, are interested to take on our service, so our office is in Subiaco or Sud5531 Hayes Street, Subiaco in Western Australia. And this is, is the phone number. So in the Philippines, we are located at the 19th floor of Marco Polo on Safar Road, um, Pasig City. Here are, here's our website, msaimmigrationaustralia.com.au. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash msaimmigrationaustralia, Instagram, msaimmigrationaustralia. So you can uh, chat us there and uh, yeah, look, basically look into those services and programs that we're offering. Okay, so yeah, so this is us. Um, yeah, basically that's about it. And um, you can actually scan this um, QR code that's on your screen so you can book an appointment with us. Or again, you can just uh, check the messages we sent there, the MSA Immigration Australia. Uh, that's at more.com. All right. And again, uh, please take a screenshot of this um, webinar and take a screenshot of uh, you liking our page and then send your entries to hello um, at msaimmigrationaustralia.com.au so we, you can be, um, or you can enter our TJIF Friday promo. All right, so I would give you time to scan this one and book your appointments. So yeah, basically, and uh, while you're um, checking our appointment page, I would like to take this chance to thank Pauline and thank Yong for being here today and giving some insights to our uh, participants. And to you participants, I also want to thank you for taking this time of your uh, weekend to um, actually join this webinar. All right. So um, any more, uh, do, you, do you want to add anything, Yong or Pauline? Um, none on my end. I would just like to thank everyone. I'm MSA for holding this webinar. Young, of course, thank you for joining us this weekend. And yeah, yeah. Um, keep safe, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, yeah, thanks again, uh, Pauline and uh, uh, Reina for having us. And uh, just let us know if you need anything else. 
Yeah, sure. Um, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. So if there are any more chats left on um, there or any questions, please direct them to our Facebook or to our, or you can actually reserve your questions and book an appointment with us. Thank you, guys, once again, and have a great weekend. Keep safe. Thank you.